About a month ago, I asked you all to send me your original supervillain. You all delivered, and I selected five to adapt into today's story. Now, without further ado, on with the show! It was early in the morning when Dino Dude, leader of the Imagination Team, called a meeting, much to everyone's dismay. The Imagination Team, a team that no one on the team actually liked, but because the author named it in third grade, Dino Dude said they had to keep, was, in truth, more of a guild than a team. Members could live on base, train, gain alliances, and request backup for missions. The only requirement to be in the guild was that if you were on base and a mission was called, you were obligated to participate. The current heroes on base that day were Dino Dude, an autistic man who could turn into dinosaurs, Super X, a man who could absorb the powers of anything he touched, Universal Man, a man who gained incredible powers from the Giga Piece lodged in his forehead, Terror Tiger, a guardian of nature who could transform into a humanoid pyrokinetic tiger, and Blue Wing, a man who could shoot freezing arrows from his enchanted bow. The team all met up in the main lobby, where Dino Dude was standing with a projector ready. I swear to you, Dalton, Universal Man groaned, this better be worth getting out of bed for. Of course it probably is, Dino Dude said as he turned on the, the projector. Now, for the past few episodes, we've been having constant fights with this company called Bi Evansburg Bioengineering. They're a bioengineering company that has created several villains over the years, such as Samara, Audrey 2, Project Amanda, and that crackhead Barney. One question, Super X asked. Why are you explaining this? We already know this. Diamond nodded, then said, I was not explaining for you. Anyway, due to some successful hacking on the part of Yoshi there, Happy to help, as always. We were able to get into the computer of one of Evansburg's higher-up, named Oliver Gray. A picture of a man wearing a wolf helmet and carrying a javelin came onto the screen. Question again. Why is he wearing a wolf mask? Super X asked. Diamond Dude began to explain. Basically, this guy's wife was a biologist who enjoyed studying wolves. Unfortunately, she was killed during a supervillain hero conflict. Because of this, Oliver now hates all enhanced individuals and wants to wipe us from the planet. His helmet thing both allows him to create supersonic sound attacks, but also allows him to communicate with wolves. Terror Tiger then spoke. That's fair. I not, not the genocide thing, but liking wolves. They're like cute puppies that could rip out your guts and break your bones with their adorable jaws of death. Maverick, pay attention. The only one allowed to go on wild, probably concerning tangents, is me, Dino Dude said, then continued. Anyway, we've gotten intel that Oliver Gray and an unknown supervillain have teamed up to create some bioweapon. A diagram of Evansburg then appeared on screen. Now the weapon is being contained in the basement on the lowest floor. I got it. I will start making a portal, Universal Man said. Wait, Dino Dude interrupted him. Unfortunately, they have built some kind of plot-convenient device that makes it impossible to teleport in or out. So, we'll have to get in the old-fashioned way. Well then, Blue Wing said, what are we waiting for? Once the team got to the Evansburg compound, Universal Man used his abilities to turn them invisible. Okay, so what's the plan? Blooming asked. Well, if we get a wheelbarrow and Andre the Giant, put them in a coat, set them on fire, and- Dalton! Universal Man snapped. Down dude sighed, then quickly counted the guards. Okay, there appear to be ten armed guards, all armed with your basic M16s. Assuming 30 rounds per gun, but I'm not sure. Basic body armor, I figure this should be a quick in and out. We can each take two out easily and- Oh wait. Oh wait, what's oh wait? Super X asked. Down dude pointed to a man who he had previously missed in his count, standing at the center of the guards. Cement. Cement was interesting as far as supervillains went. When it came to power, cement was somewhat lacking, only having A list super strength and the durability of a cement wall, hence his name. However, cement was still able to make a name for himself in the supervillain underground by selling weapons. Cement, either legally or otherwise, was rich, and used this money to buy some of the most expensive and reliable weapons, which he sold to villains of all stripes. 
This essentially meant that Cement had both the protection of, and alliances with, almost every villain the Imagination team fought, including Evansburg. Does this alter the plan at all, or what? Universal Man asked. Okay, so the rest of us will take on two guards each. I will come up with a plan to deal with Cement. The team attacked. Immediately, the guards began to open fire, but Terror Tiger and Universal Man, who were naturally bulletproof, were unaffected. Universal Man also put a force field around the three members who didn't have natural defenses. Terror Tiger began tearing various guards to shreds, while Universal Man summoned two purple plasma swords and began fighting through the guards. Unfortunately, Universal Man could only use one power at once, so the force field soon fell. However, before it fell, Super X touched the field and absorbed its power. His suit and skin turned bright purple, and the bullets began to bounce off his skin. Dino Dude, meanwhile, turned himself into an Ankylosaurus and began using his club-like tail to attack the guards. Blue Wing, meanwhile, shot his freezing arrows, turning the guards into statues of ice. However, this was when Cement entered the battle. Swinging his heavy hammer, he bashed Terra Tiger directly in the face. Terra Tiger flew back and crashed into a concrete wall. However, Dino Dude got an idea. He walked over to Blue Wing. Hey, Woods, do you know how potholes work by chance? Blue Wing stared at him. We live in Indiana. Yes, I know how potholes work, he said, slightly annoyed. Dino Dude then gestured over to Cement. Ah, I see where you're going with this, Blue Wing said as he knocked an arrow. He then took aim and fired, the icy arrow landing straight in Cement's armor. As the arrow froze, the armor began to warp and crack until it fell off into pieces. Then, which, with a single punch to the head, Universal Man knocked him unconscious. Now the team was inside the building. The bioweapon was being held on the lowest floor of the building, and so they had to fight through several floors full of villains to get through it. Most of these battles were fairly easy, as the team effortlessly fought off humanoid purple dinosaur drug dealers, singing female plant monsters, multiple electronic ghost children, and others. However, they soon got to a floor as that they thought would be easy to go through, as it only contained one scientist, Working on a strange portal, the team went into the room, and the scientists immediately saw them. Uh, intruders! He whimpered. Stop! S stop right there! Don't make me do this! Terror Tiger groaned. So, can we just kill this guy, or... No, we'll give him a chance, Super X said before turning to the scientists. Look, we're just passing through. No, I have orders to, to stop you! I will stop you! Yes, you're very intimidating, Blue Wing said sarcastically, as he knocked an ice arrow and aimed at the scientist. The scientist then growled, Fine then. He then pushed a button on the portal, causing it to open. Suddenly, a strange creature came flying out the other side. Its upper half was mostly humanoid, albeit with blue skin, green hair, and two knife-like purple horns. It wore what looked like the upper half of a purple and green kimono. It, the bottom half, however, appeared to be much more monstrous, being a floating snake-like skeleton with a bladed tail on one end. The creature held out its hand towards the team, revealing each hand to have a mouth with razor-sharp teeth inside. Immediately, Terror Tiger rushed the creature, attempting to push it back into the portal. However, the creature nimbly dodged and, using its powerful claws, cut a deep gash into Terror Tiger's back. Meanwhile, Universal Man shot a laser from his forehead at the creature, but the laser merely faced through, seemingly having no effect. Dino Dude stepped back from the battle and turned on his watch. Uh, hey, Yoshi, are you still in the Evansburg Files? Yes, I am. Uh, what do you need? Great. Can you look around their occult department until you find something that looks like Universal Man had a baby with an SCP? That is certainly a description. Anyway, that should take me a few seconds. Got it. The creature you're fighting is called the Blue Yokai. It is a demonic entity that Evansburg has apparently been successful in summoning. It is technically a weaker demon, but still not one to mess with. Assuming we were to mess with it, and by that I mean we are currently fighting it, how do we end the fight? Yoshi scrolled down the file. Apparently, you need to either decapitate the blue yokai, or kill the human that summoned it. Either of these actions will force the demon back into the- Suddenly, Terror Tiger leapt towards the lone scientist, who gave a horrific scream as Terror Tiger tore him in half. As soon as this happened, a red glowing hand reached out from the portal and dragged the blue yokai back from whence it came. Everyone gave Terror Tiger a look. 
What? You said kill the guy. The team proceed to go through several more floors, fighting through several more guards and villains. Unfortunately, we will be skipping past all this, as I have a feeling this episode will be long enough as it is. Eventually, they reach the final floor, where they all expected to see some complicated piece of technology, or an army of guards, or something like that. However, when they reached their target, they only saw two men at a table. The first man was Oliver Gray, as expected. However, the second man was one that only Diodude seemed to recognize. Ah, Ares. I had a feeling it'd be you. Terra Tiger looked at him, puzzled. Ares, like, the god of war? Ares then answered, Yea and nay, thy art a physical manifestation of war, possessed by the power and spirit of Ares. Whatever that means, Universal Man said. So, Team Jacob, Diodude asked Oliver, why are you partnering with Angry Baklava over there? For once our goals aligned, Oliver explained. I want to get rid of all enhanced individuals plaguing this earth. And while I am not as revenge-driven as my canine accomplice, thy has found thou existence be far less beneficial. In days past, wars used to break out every day, with massive armies standing against each other in true bloody combat. However, since you superhumans appeared, the number of wars has dramatically decreased. Thou art thou practically living nuclear deterrence. So, for the good of humanity and thyself, thou wilt be eliminated. Blueing sighed. As much as I hesitate to ask this question, how are wars good for humanity? Ares then started an evil monologue. The world thrives off of combat. The world thrives off of war. Thy so-called world leaders say they want peace, but what do they do? They have not one, but two world wars. It is almost humorous how hypocritical these mortals can be. Do they not see it is in their very nature to fight? So, I ask thou, is thou ready for another war? Oliver then joined in on the monologue, you superhumans are plagues on this world, a disease that needs to be- Look, I'm autistic, I've heard the whole let's wipe your kind from the earth spiel before, Down Dude said. Yeah, same here, Blue Wing agreed. So can we just skip to the whole you try and kill us part? As pleasurable as it would be to render your mortal existence to blood and ash, thy cannot partake. You see, your arrival here was no accident. Some may call it divine destiny. Ares laughed to himself. Okay, now he's making puns. Can we kill him now? Universal Man asked. You see, Ares continued. As we were talking, Gray's and mine creation was completed, and it needs to be tested before we release it upon the Earth. So, ta-ta. Ares and Oliver quickly exited the room, locking the door behind them. The team attempted to chase after them, but suddenly, a green light began to envelop the room. The team turned around to see what looked like a very muscular man, with green radioactive flames surrounding him. His skin was coated in white metal, with green markings painted across. He also had green hair swooped to one side, and... Though there was the imprint of the mouth, he had none. Super X quickly rushed to it as it tried to absorb the towers. Absorb! he yelled. But the moment Super X touched the creature's skin, his hand began to wither and melt, overcome by the radiation. Super X quickly passed out from the pain. Keeping his distance, Blue Wing tried to shoot it with his freezing arrows. However, the ice simply melted as, it, as soon as they made impact, and the creature continued walking forth. Terra Tiger, who was physically the strongest, attempted to wrestle the creature. While at his enhanced spot, he was able to withstand most of the radiation, he was still easily overpowered. Universal Man then cast a force field around the monster, which at first seemed to work. However, the monster then began to punch, and slowly began to crack through the force field. Diamond Dude spoke into his watch. 
Hey, Yoshi, what information can you find about walking Chernobyl over here? I swear, do you just have a nickname for every villain we face? Focus on your force field, Sean. Yoshi. Okay, got the information pulled up right here. Apparently it's called the Genetic Replica Engineered to Eradicate Nations, or the Green for short. Essentially, it's a living nuclear reactor created to eradicate entire countries. That's just great. Uh, do the files say how we can stop it, or...? Uh, the files have very little information on that, however, they do recommend drowning it. Final Dude then began to formulate a plan. Yoshi, can you hack into and disable the plot convenient teleportation blockers? Yes, but it would take even an experienced hacker at least a few hours. So how long would it take you? About two minutes, approximately. Great, I'll buy you some time. Dino Dude turned to Universal Man. Hey, one of your abilities is that you can stop time, correct? Universal Man nodded. Yes, but I'm kind of busy with the force field here. Is there any way you can use that power to speed up time for about two minutes just outside of this room? Universal Man shrugged. Hypothetically, yes, but that would leave us fighting this guy for two minutes with no force field. We'll take the risk. Just do it. Universal Man sighed and put mm, up, down the force field before starting to speed up time. Terror Tiger breathed a plume of mm, fire at green, but had mm, very little effect. Blue Wing then had an idea. Shooting off his ice arrows, he built up a wall of ice, about five feet thick. This wouldn't permanently stop the green, but it would at least hold him for at least two minutes. Finally, the time passed, and Yoshi was able to hack into and disable the teleportation blockers. Once they were di down, Diamond Dude yelled to Universal Man, Quickly, make a portal to the Pacific Ocean under him. Universal Man looked at him. Will dumping living nuclear waste into the ocean have any ramifications? Yeah, probably, but we'll probably also just make it the plot of a future artist adaptation. What the? Whatever, fine. Universal Man threw Green into the ocean, and they all watched as he drowned. Universal Man then healed Super X's hand, and the Imagination Team had won.